I don't have a particular report at this time, uh, but uh, we do have uh, someone in our midst, uh, Chief Humphrey, that has uh, a presentation to make as part of the mayor's report for this evening. So, Chief, uh, come forward. Mayor, Council, tonight I want to re uh, represent one of our individuals at the Police Department for his outstanding service. He's the 2013 Officer of the Year. Uh, the 2013 Officer of the Year Award this year is a little bit different than previous years. Normally, supervisors don't receive that award. It's uh, not someone of rank, but it can be. And this individual has uh, proven himself to be an outstanding supervisor for our department. And uh, contrary to what most people might think, that being a police officer isn't always fun. <laughs> and our jobs aren't uh, what they uh, seem to be on some of the TV shows. And there's a lot of stress involved with being a police officer, a lot of ups and downs, and a lot <coughs> of stuff that a normal officer on the street has to put up with. It's nice when you have a supervisor that takes care of you so that you can take care of the people on the that, for the community. Uh, this year's recipient is Lieutenant David Ewing. David, will you come up here, please? And I'm going to read a short letter. And the comments in the letter were made by the people that work for him and with him. And they, they speak it best. They say what I can't say. Uh, and I'm, I'm honored to, uh, to repeat what they think about their supervisor. I recently read uh, a, uh, an article in the magazine, in Chief's Magazine, that said the number one source for, for a police officer is not dealing with things on the street, but it's their immediate supervisor. And I thought that was not true, but I kind of took an internal poll, and sometimes it is. And being a police officer, I can say that my immediate supervisor sometimes caused me stress. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but this is not what this guy does. And I want to I wanna read what his, uh, his shift has wrote about him. I wish to congratulate you on receiving the Russellville Police Department's Officer of the Year Award. This award is given to an officer who has distinguished himself through either an accum accumulation of exceptional contributions or a single incident whose actions clearly place the individual above others of equal rank or grade. While serving as Sea Shift Watch Commander, you have displayed your continued commitment to inspire your subordinates in achieving their personal best. Your subordinates give, <coughs> your subordinates give you the best account of your attributes. They have said, he cares about us professionally and personally. He keeps us motivated and he helps us, helps us achieve our personal best. He believes, in, he believes we are a team and supports the team effort. He is a mentor for us and ensures we are properly trained and takes care of us so we can do our jobs. David, I, you continually display your dedication in serving the community as well as those you work with each day. You are greatly respected by everyone throughout the police department and it is my pleasure to present you with the 2013 Officer Year Award. Chief, I think that was an excellent choice in that regard. I appreciate it. David, we appreciate everything that you do every day on the job, what you do with your family, the 
kinds of service that uh, they have seen to give, not just you as an individual, but your entire family, and you're to be commended, all of you. Uh, it's been exceptional, and we thank you sincerely. At this time, uh, I would ask uh, Danny Love, uh, he is Cruz and Associates, to come forward if he would, please. And Christy Graham. Mayor Eaton, council members, community members. It is my honor to be back home in Polk County tonight to, representing Cruz and Associates and Arkansas Business to present a City of Distinction Award uh, to the City of Russellville, uh, an award that was officially presented at the Arkansas Municipal League Winter Conference a couple of weeks ago up in Rogers. And uh, being the uh, presenting sponsor for this award and working with Arkansas Business, we wanted to come and make a, a personal presentation to the mayor and the city tonight and to congratulate you. Each of you have uh, on your desk there uh, the brochure. Uh, Russellville is covered on page 30. This uh, City of Distinction Award to Russellville, uh, Russellville was the winner in the tourism category for cities above $20,000. And basically the award has to go with the development that and the promotion that Russellville has done with Lake Dardanelle, specifically with the fishing situation. Uh, Lake Dardanelle and Russellville has become a mecca for some of the largest bass tournaments in uh, the nation. Uh, it, uh, the dedication and the foresight that has gone into this, uh, lots of hard hours, and, I, and I, I know you can probably address everything that's gone into that, but those are the types of things that uh, caught the attention of the committee that looked at all the applications that came in, uh, and this was certainly something that I think is truly uh, meritorious uh, of the city of Russellville, and it's my honor to present this award Somewhere I think it says that I'm supposed to do what's known as the State of the City Address at this time. So I think I'm going to step to the other podium to do this and do it standing up. Thank you. This is something that is uh, not just about what we do, it's to share with the public where I believe that we are as a city 
and to ensure that you know council, uh, citizens, and everybody in our community where our city stands and the relationship uh, that we have and, and share uh, with many. So with this, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the city council chambers of Russellville, a great place to live, work, play, and raise a family. This is the 2014 State of the City Address. For the past three years, we have seen a slowly improving economy, one that continues to make progress, and there are a number of positives that are poised to begin as a result of that progress being made. Russellville is continuing to get stronger each year, and we can truly say that we are the natural choice in the natural state. We are blessed with a diverse economy here, one not tied to a specific major industry. We have made no major set we have had no major setbacks or mass layoffs as some cities in the other parts of Arkansas have had to weather. Part of the reason for that is the quality of the workforce in the River Valley area, recognized by developers and investors alike. The contributors to various business periodicals share this, a brimming confidence that the modest recovery we are in will continue. Consumers are more optimistic, and that gives credence to improving confidence. A very large percentage of Arkansas leaders cite that consumer confidence is the part that makes the strongest impact on economic conditions. Fortunately, we are located on beautiful Lake Dardanelle, and you heard about the award that was given this evening as part of that. We are at the intersection of Scenic Highway 7 and Interstate 40, a position favorable to a convention center that can be the best between Little Rock and Fort Smith, and things are moving favorably with that project and positively with the long anticipated intermodal facility also. In support of that, we have reached out with mayors and other community leaders up the Arkansas River in partnership to promote the deepening of the Arkansas River Channel to 12 feet, which will be an enhancement for commerce and development. With the outdoor attraction of Lake Dardanelle, the hillsides and natural assets of our landscape, we must continue to capitalize on these attributes to improve our quality of life. Other evidence of that confidence and growth can be identified by a summary of some 170 new industrial jobs in the past year at some 10 local industries and a robust plant expansion of over $100 million at ConAgra Foods, and an addition of 80 well-paying jobs coming this year with that expansion. Also, part of this progress can be seen from the expansion and improvements in Russellville's medical facilities, particularly the new Millard Henry Primary Care Physician Clinic, part of the St. Mary's Regional Medical Facility under construction throughout 2013 and set to open this March the 2nd. It is the largest and a premier such facility between Little Rock and Fort Smith and represents a strong commitment by their multi-million dollar investment that they have made. Also, their staff enhancements include the addition of two OBGYN doctors, four family practitioners, one cardiologist, and three hospitalists this past year. Likewise, there has been approximately $2 million reinvested from the private sector in our historic downtown over the past 12 to 16 months, including these establishments, Lavish, Gallery 307, Kitchen Crazy, Fat Daddy's, Funky Junkie, Penny University Coffee, Sudi's, Rendezvous, Serendipity, and Limley House Art Guild. Other property purchases 
have recently been made that will result in second floor residential space and more street level shopping. These enhancements are the result of individual interests and the confidence shown of Main Street Russellville, Russellville Historic District Commission, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Downtown Master Steering Committee. Presenters at various conferences, and from what I read, note that the cities that are going to be the most successful in the future are the ones that offer a good quality of life for their residents, and research points to that. From the public sector perspective, parking improvements in the historic downtown area are being reviewed by a joint Pope County and City of Russellville Committee for a proposed enhancement project. The streetscape enhancement project on Main was done to help redefine downtown as a destination place, making things more handicapped accessible, pedestrian friendly, with traffic calming features, and, and street beautification included. All these things are contributing to improved quality of life in Russellville. Issues related to stormwater management or drainage have seen improvement with the Waco Detention Basin that will double as a neighborhood park on the west side of the city. While plans are currently underway, for work on Prairie Creek in the eastern part of the city through a partnership with the Corps of Engineers. And as we move purposely forward as a city, we must remember that we should build this city for people. Build this city for people, ensuring that it is built to enhance prosperity and bring jobs here. Our challenge in doing that, yours and mine, is dealing with resistance to change. There is an old proverb that goes like this, change is not merely necessary to life, it is life. One really great positive that we have, that we have here in Russellville, and it is not available to all our Kansans, is this. It is Arkansas Tech University, ATU, Arkansas Tech, whatever terminology you use. Arkansas Tech contributes significantly to the economy of Russellville, and it continues to grow in student enrollment and infrastructure. My hat is off to all those at Tech who have contributed to the university's success and its collaborative spirit with the city. A specific example of that spirit was the recent joint city university proposal for a new veterans home. Additionally, Russellville is blessed with a strong municipal workforce, always ready to meet the challenges of a high volume work environment. I want to share some of the individual department accomplishments of this past year. The municipal airport completed the purchase of 10 plus acres at the west end of the runway within the runway protection zone and ended a history of attempts to convert the property for uses that were incompatible with the airport. And most of the price of that is recoverable through federal aviation grants. The runway received seal coating and remarking and construction of a new self-service aviation gas fueling system was begun and is very near completion at this time. And new approach lighting and end identifier light systems along with an update of the master plan will be done in 2014. During 2013, community development issued 1,215 permits, netting $176,200 in fees for the city. And they conducted 1,730 inspections throughout the year. Construction projects in the city for this year included 98 residential, 120 commercial, and 106 
in other categories for a total estimated cost of construction of $78,200,000. Also, there were 112 new business permits issued this year. And with its code enforcement arm, 465 violation letters were issued for action relating to such things as tall grass and weeds, inoperative motor vehicles, unsightly or unsanitary conditions at buildings. 22 dilapidated structures were closed out and eight other citations were written in all. All that improve the appearance of our city. Community development will add one employee at mid-year to improve our capability to maintain city property and facilities. Also, upgrades to city codes and regulations will be completed that will aid with the proper plan reviews and inspection performance as a commitment to ensure structures are maintained in a serve in a safe and sanitary condition for the benefit of all citizens. The Animal Control Department during 2013 initiated a, num a number of free adoption days and, re and reduced the euthanasia rate by 11% this past year. With oversight by Animal Control, the first urban deer hunt was completed last year with the successful harvesting of 51 deer and 48 were harvested this year to help reduce vehicle accidents and nuisance complaints within the city. There are plans to eliminate a requirement for city pet licensing in 2014 and construction of an additional building for quarantining and increased housing capacity at the animal shelter. Human Resources organized a wellness committee for the city to emphasize healthy lifestyle, nutrition, preventive care, and raise employee awareness by participation in the city's wellness works program. It also supports community development and the city's clean and green activities <coughs> to help remove litter from our city. Initiation of stronger student partnerships coordinated by human resources with Arkansas Tech has been helpful and will continue to be strengthened in 2014 through collaboration with the History and Political Science Department. And you saw some of the students who are here with us this evening. The Information Technology Department placed new personal computers in the various departments this year to maintain the latest technology and keep pace with the replacement cycle program that they have in place. Additionally, iPads were, in, were deployed for use with the fire and police departments for special program access and improved portability. A research plan in coordination with Arkansas Tech called Bring Your Own Device was initiated to help determine trends in usage, issues involved, and performance enhancing capabilities from the study as it relates to information technology. It will aid the city in developing our future policies. The department IT kept over a 90% monthly service level for the city's computers throughout the year while maintaining 10 web-based programs in operation within the city. Crime in Russellville is at its all-time low with last year's rate of 3.4 violent offenses per 1,000 population. During 2013, Russellville police officers responded to 19,000 calls for service and offers, officers themselves initiated 8,150 more calls. To ensure that the level of safety and professionalism of service provided by that department is always increased, 
some 8,600 hours of in-service training, including firearms, defensive tactics, DWI and narcotics investigation, rules of criminal procedures, bias-based profiling, underage drinking prevention, and child passenger safety was attended by those department members. As a follow-on to that last training, I mentioned the department provided and installed over 60 free child safety seats to the community's citizens by its eight certified officers. As further community outreach, the department conducted a citizen's police academy and two youth academies for children ages 10 through 15. Both emergency service personnel and fire personnel were included in those academies, and they are the most requested service projects that the city conducts. The police department implemented a five-year replacement vehicle plan in 2013 and plans to initiate a software vehicle maintenance management system to lower costs and better manage vehicle maintenance for its fleet of vehicles going forward this year. An increase in service provided to victims of crimes in coordination with the prosecuting attorney's office is also planned. During 2013, the fire department responded to over 1,900 fire rescue and service calls, and they conducted some 23,900 hours of training related to firefighting, rescue, emergency medical services, and hazardous materials, and inspected and tested over 1,000 fire hydrants across the city. The department is currently working on a downtown fire district assessment. Property for the new home of the central fire station was purchased in preparation of construction of the replacement facility for an aging and inadequate structure. Also, some 400 fire prevention property inspections were made by this team. And a strategic plan implementing revisions of the 2013 ISO grading schedule will focus on fire prevention programs within the city. The Recreation and Parks Department was also busy during 2013, opening the Wildlife Observation Trail and the Illinois Bio Trail, part of Pleasant View Park. An Arkansas Highway and Transportation Grant for recreational trails was received to construct, to construct Orbit Lane Trail. In cooperation with Public Works, Parks completed a pedestrian bridge and improved support facilities at Hickey Park and hosted numerous ball tournaments throughout the year. The department will update the park master plan this year and continue to upgrade park amenities and improve accessibility. The extension trail to Phoenix, a Phoenix Avenue will also be developed. A lighting project for the soccer complex started and construction of the anticipated community aquatic center will begin also. The Public Works Department was involved in various maintenance functions, in-house projects, and construction projects. In the area of maintenance, there were some 2,407 work orders opened and completed during the year. Over 145,000 linear feet, or 27 and a half miles, of streams and ditches were cleaned and cleared through the year. 1,794 hours was spent mowing and edging around the city, and 610 hours was used to sweep the streets of the city. Additionally, there were 440 vehicle services completed for city vehicles by that department. The in-house project included such items as culvert replacement, drainage structure repairs and jetting, box culvert construction, and road shoulder work on Skyline Drive, Shepherd Drive, Herald Drive, Waterworks Road, and Hobnob Road. 
<clears throat> they added left turn signals at El Paso and Parkway and Phoenix and Parkway, and also a video signaling at Joplin and Skyline Drive. Construction projects completed in 2013 included JL Shin drainage improvements in the southeast part of the city. Reasoner Avenue and Arkansas Avenue signal project, North Greenwich extension and bridge, South Glenwood realignment, and Old Post Road. Those started in 2013, which will be completed this year, include Waco drainage detention, H Street and Parker Road, North El Paso Avenue, and the Phoenix and Railroad overpass projects, which total just over $13,281,000. Those last three mentioned are part of what we call the complete street design that reflect consideration of all modes of transportation, pedestrian, bike, and vehicle. City Corp, the city's water and wastewater system, is making continual progress on system improvements for our citizens, including millions of dollars of pipeline improvements to prevent inflow and infiltration. And currently there is a $13 million wastewater plant upgrade that was funded by a bond issue made possible by the city of Russellville. All of these efforts are addressing the consent administrative order that have been issued and providing a much improved system for the city. You should know that none of these accomplishments would have occurred without the efforts of a strong municipal workforce, competent and dedicated department heads and other leaders, the tireless volunteers who serve on numerous boards and commissions, and the support of this city council. Thanks sincerely to each of you. Regarding the city of Russellville's annual financial report for 2013, the city general fund beginning balance was $2,000,000 $9,299. Total receipts for the year included $14,910,974 and total expenditures were $12,836,064, leaving a balance at the end of year of $4,084,208. The street fund beginning balance was $17,578,540. Total receipts included $9,224,399, with total expenditures of $11,383,425, leaving a balance at the end of the year of $15,000,000. $419,515. Of all the special funds within the city, the combined beginning balance was $10,615,874. Total receipts were $3,736,206, with total expenditures of $2,737,450 leaving a balance of $11,614,629. Another very positive for 2013 was that the city's sales tax revenue was up 6% over the previous year, another indicator of consumer confidence that I mentioned earlier in this report. 2014 will provide new opportunities to strengthen this community. And as we focus on becoming a community of livable neighborhoods that meet present needs without compromising future generations' ability to meet the needs of their public, we will have become better shepherds, not just hired hands. And I 
As I start to close, I would just like to leave you with a quote from that great track legend, Jesse Owens. He said, find the good. Find the good. It's all around you. Find it. Showcase it. And you'll start believing it. You here and who are receiving the telecast of this, our citizens, enable the city to move forward with enhancements to infrastructure and improve city services by passing an extension of the one cent sales tax this past year. A small price to pay for a big return on investing in improved streets, drainage, a new central fire station, community aquatic center, recreation and parks enhancements and improvements, city corp wastewater upgrades, and citywide economic <coughs> development projects. I particularly want to praise those who made a valuable extra effort, both financially and in time invested to make the sales tax campaign an extremely good success for our city. God bless the United States of America, the state of Arkansas, and the city of Russellville. That concludes my report.